Good morning from Bali. I'm Kat Kabira, and I'm attempting to make this a briefer video on making choices and following your aliveness. I'm curious how you make your choices. Admittedly, right before making this video, I received news that one more person in my world um, has just taken their life. And it's been something that I feel really personally passionate about, even previous to our COVID times. You know, part of my work is, is how can we really want to be here in our bodies and on this planet? Um, having my own personal struggle, you know, just from having experienced quite a bit of trauma um, when I was much younger and it continued where I was like, fuck life. I don't want to do this. I'm out. And at the same time to feel this level of, of sparkle and enthusiasm and curiosity for life. And it does take some effort of, we can almost forget who we really are and we all get down. There's no one who isn't insecure. There's no one who doesn't have rough times. There isn't anyone who thinks, how the fuck can I get through this? I'm out, I'm done. We all have our own coping mechanisms. We, we can shut down, numb out, freeze out, you know, and then how do we get through this? How can we reclaim our essence? How can we start to find that, that thread of light you know, despite how dark it is? And despite the, the level of pain that we, we either are currently experiencing or have experienced. So, you know, as usual, I could, I could talk to you for weeks about this, but just one simple thing because Sometimes when we're experiencing a shutdown in our life, or even we might go into a more like rigid pattern, like control, where it's like, okay, like, here's my formula, here's my routine. And, and like, this is my schedule, this is my structure, not even realizing that we might do this to create some safety, but it's not a real safety. It's, it's more like a fear response and a rigid routine. And if anyone has ever struggled with an eating disorder, you know, that's one of my specialties is, is working with that. Um, you know, the, the more anorectic personality or the more restrictive personality, you know, that that's, that's one thing that we can do, even if we're not acting out in our eating that way, you know, in our psychological response to life, you know, we can get really rigid and controlled. And that, you know, if we think about like, when we're really in the essence of life, it's like allowing the surprise, allowing the spontaneity, allowing ourselves to be present enough where we can kind of just feel what's happening and, and follow that. And, and that's not to say that <clears throat> there are times where we make plans, right? But <clears throat> there's a very big difference between making plans and being fluid around it versus being really rigid. Um, the other way that we can be experiencing a shutdown is more like we're numbed out. We can't feel anything. We don't care about anything. And also where it's like, we just don't want to do anything. Um, you know, I've got, I've got some clients where it's just hard for them to leave the bed, you know, and, and they just don't want to engage with life. Um, and, it, and addictions can be another way where it's like, I don't want to engage with what's here. I want to take something to somehow take me away or, or change the feeling and the experience. So on a really simple level, because one thing that we all are confronted with or, or get the opportunity to work with every day is, is how we're making choices. And if you can kind of feel into your body, so of course that means you actually have to be in your body, which is a journey within itself. And uh, for those of you who've been working with your body, you'll know that like, it's not like you're in and you're in, right? It's, it's like, oh, you know, I come in and out and I get to witness that part of me. But how can you start to make choices that 
really are following the life force or the aliveness. Um, I, I was taking a singing lesson uh, two days ago, and and the thing that lit me up about my my teacher was like right when I met her, there was just this level of aliveness to her. Like I could just see it and feel it. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I, whatever's going to help, you know, like bring my aliveness more too, um, which singing totally works. Right. Um, and she's quite like, it's not normal singing. Like it was like a journey through the whole body. Um, so The thing is, is that when we're making choices according to our aliveness, yes, you'll be able to feel in your body that there's like maybe a a sparkle or an expansion, but there's going to be edges and you're going to have to have like a choice point of like, am I willing to stretch myself? And especially for those of you who might've done some therapy and, and working on yourself, yes, you recognize that safety is important. But sometimes we can misconstrue safety with a comfort zone or safety even as like a familiarity. And and that's the hardest thing because familiarity, it's like a very subtle, intimate place in our, our nervous system where it's almost like much more primal of like what we've been born with, what's in our DNA, our, our primary family of origin, like the first you know, 10 years, those patterns. So there can be very unhealthy patterns uh, that are very familiar. And we equate that with like safety, right? And the other thing about safety is that we'll think like, well, safety means like, oh, I'm I'm in a box and I can control everything or, um, you know, it's like everything is known. And, and while we might need to have like moments, if we're in like a huge overwhelm or, you know, going on through a lot or really sick, it's like, yeah, there's going to be a certain environment that we might need to repair and recuperate and nourish. But in general, we, we want to be able to also be able to expand ourselves. And, and that means, especially if we're almost going to be jumping our frequency from one level to the next, where it's like, okay, I'm going to stretch a little bit. And, and stretching might be a little bit uncomfortable. And we do need to have that discernment between like danger or injuring versus, okay, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but I actually want this. And that would be following your aliveness. Um, in, my, in my voice lesson the other day, you know, she was very present with me and it was beautiful. I felt like it was like, if I was a, a singing teacher, like this is who would show up. Um, because she, uh, she, she could just feel and see uh, energetically what was happening. So she's like, you know, I can tell that you're completely terrified, you know, before you would open your mouth to sing every single time. And yet, like, you would meet that. And then it's like the trepidation would be there and the, and the anxiety and the nervousness. And then suddenly you just make this huge sound. And so, you know, we, we don't want to confuse some nervousness or fear or trepidation and even excitement as like, this is a no. It's more like, oh, this is, this is something that's alive for me. You know, when I used to um, go on the flying trapeze and the static and the dance trapeze, I mean, especially with the flying, like I, I would feel like I was going to throw up every single time I would climb up the rings um, because, you know, it just, it was a lot for my system. And yet there was also a part of me that, that loved flying. And I also knew that I wasn't going to harm myself. So I was able to, to witness that wave. I mean, even back when I was teaching a lot of group classes, I would get nervous before teaching. Even like 15 years into teaching, I would still get nervous. So that nervousness is actually a sign that we're on. Um, I, I, I used to know before running big trainings that I was, it was a good sign that I was nervous because that meant that I was like really awake and, and alert. And when I felt kind of like, ah, you know, it's old hat. I was like, oh, that, that's a sign that I'm not caring enough. You know, like it, it, it actually, we want to be able to be engaged in caring. You know, so, so I'm leaving this, this video where it's like, you know, we, we've been riding the waves of, of COVID and lockdown and, you know, there's more surprises to come. 
And if we can really, as much as we can, just kind of ignore everyone else's opinions um, around us and on the internet, especially. And can you feel into your body of, you know, what things, where do you feel that aliveness, that pulse, that sparkle in your body? You know, it can be something simple as like trying out a new movement class or, or trying a new instrument out or meeting a new friend or dating someone new or um, traveling or, you know, moving or changing careers. And, and that difference between where the choice that you're making, it's almost like dead energy versus like, yeah, this is really alive for me. There's something here that's keeping me curious. So child energy, which we all want to keep alive. Um, you know, as a curiosity and, and there's something that, that is, it's, it's keeping me like, Ooh, I want to discover what's happening. It's, it's, it's engaging us. Right. And there's just going to be a feeling of like awakeness. So that's my like super challenge to you this week is, you know, what is it like for you in small ways and, and maybe big ways to really follow your aliveness? Because that's when you're, you're going to know that you're following your sparkle, your spark, your flow, and your light. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.